G'day guys, Dave from 4 by 4 Brothers here. This video, what I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna be installing an in-cab winch switch. So why I am doing this is basically, the Rhino winch I've got comes with the wireless control as well as the, the hand control. Um, I thought it was a bit of a backup because if for some reason when you're out and the batteries go flat in your wireless remote, um, it gives you another option to wind it in quite simply other than hooking up your hand control. One other thing as well, what I did do, which gets you out of a pickle too, I wrecked my hand control. So I was pulling some tree stumps out in the paddock, um, had the winch cable basically from the winch run up over the bonnet um, and into the cab. As I was backing up, the, the cable fell off the bonnet, underneath the tyre it went and I snapped the cable. So this will alleviate any mishaps that you might have like myself, which then, say your batteries went flat, say you didn't have a hand control or it broke, um, you could then quite easily just use your winch from in the cabin. Um, how I'm gonna do it, there's multiple ways. You can run your wiring straight into the control box and hook straight to the solenoid. But I'm gonna do it, so what you need is a winch extension. So this would basically plug into the control box and up into your bull bar or wherever you would mount that normally. I'm going to cut off the female connection and then I'm going to wire to that so it's disconnectable if I ever want to take it off the um, control box. Also, you sort of you don't want your winch to be live all the time and then have that switch in the cabin. Um, so with that, I can disconnect it from there, but also this winch comes with an isolator. So it isolates power to the winch. That's under my bonnet here. So there's two methods of disconnecting it. So that switch can't be knocked and then have the winch rip whatever it's hooked up to, um, say the bull bar, the points down here, have them ripped off. Um, I can isolate it via the, the isolator, or I can isolate it via this. So that's why I'm going that option, rather than just hooking straight to the, the solenoid. Don't need too many parts to do this, it's quite an easy job. Basically, a couple of electrical terminals, You just need a three core cable, but in this case, I'm running seven core trailer wire. Uh, what I'm also gonna do with this, uh, gives me so many more options down the track, but I'm gonna make my own um, light bar for the roof um, looms, um, and then any other power or switching I wanna run down the track, I've got plenty of options having seven cables inside the cab. Um, you do only need the three core, but yeah, for this one, Going to future proof it, save pulling more cables in later. The winch switch in and out, it's just a rocket switch. Some split conduit to run it under the engine bay so the cable's all protected. And some cable ties to tie it in nice and uh, neatly. Um, full disclosure though, I'm not an auto elect, so this is my version of it. If something's wrong, um, if I've done something the wrong way, please don't hesitate to leave the comment below. That'll help other people, that'll also help myself, and I'll be able to rectify it. So, let's get stuck into it. First step for me, pop this grill out. It gives me access to the control box, which is mounted just sort of through here. So, I can't really access it um, any other way to work on it. Plug it in, you can. There's a hole through here. Just plug straight in. So a couple of clips at the top here, pop them out, a few clips on the side of the grill, all pop out, then we can access the control box and get started. So I'm going to start off by getting this uh, split tubing over this cable. Protect it right under the bonnet. Quite easy to install this stuff. Just feeding it through. So 
I'm running, all the cabling, under the bonnet here. Got my length of how much split tubing I need to protect it under the bonnet. From this point here, it'll go through the firewall. Alright, so we're just cable tying it all in now. Stop it all from rattling around. It's amazing how much stuff does rub when you're on those rough roads and the constant shake. Take your time, do it right, you'll have no issues. So what I've actually done at the same time here, I've rerouted my aerial cable. I had it coming through the grill, so if I ever need to pull the grill out, I couldn't. So now I've rerouted it, brought it out under the grill. So just killing two birds with one stone. When I pulled the aerial cable out, I just taped on another piece of wire, just used a draw wire to pull everything back through. Make sure everything's tied on the other side and finish that cable tying in. bit here needs a bit of a tidy up. So that's the aerial cable, there's our winch cable there. I'm going to leave a bit of a loop here for it, so when I need to hook in, I can hook in my lights and all that other stuff just here. So what you have on your winch control solenoid is your out, that's your ground, and that's your in. And then obviously 12 volt coming down from the connection point down here where it comes from your battery. So if you were to hook it straight to the solenoid, you'd only need your three core wire for out, in, and 12 volt to basically switch the solenoid. And that's the back of your plug. Which we'll be hooking to. So now you've seen where you would hook to on the solenoid or how we're going to hook to on this uh, lead. I'll throw a wiring diagram up, a photo of that, so you can have a bit of a look and get a feel for it yourself. So I've just cut off the female side of the extension cord. I've stripped up my trailer wiring and I'm basically just going to match the colours. Red, yellow, black, blue. And in the trailer wiring, red, yellow, black, blue. And that will leave the other three for switching of other things. I'll do an inline crimp with all these for the join, tape it all up, get it all under the um, split tubing as well. I'll stagger the joins a little bit where we need a fit. So here is the join. I'll run tape all the way over all this just as another layer of insulation and then we'll continue the conduit all the way through. Let's tape together the join too where the two bits of split tubing meet. Stop them coming apart. Cable tie all this in, plug it in then into the in-cab switch. While I'm at it too, I'll inline crimp this, keep that in the car as backup. Uh, you never know, the switch might pack it in. Uh, the batteries again may go flat in the wireless, it may stop working. So it's always handy to have this in the car, just as another option. Here we go, good as new. I never ran over that. All right, now for the in-cab element. We've got the cable here. Get it across to where we where I want it. I can put a nice little bend on it. And hopefully, hook it out.
Here we go, as easy as that. All right, now we've got the cable in place. I'm gonna run the winch switch here. I'm gonna leave a loop here, because that'll be the roof light bar. Then I'm gonna change this switch over, because when I got the loom, it was from opposite lock. Um, so now I'm gonna change it over to be the same style as this, so they're all symmetrical. Now the cable's in, I'll strip it up, put some terminals on it, basically hook it straight up to the back of this switch. With this switch also, what you've got, it's basically ground at the top, common power, in and out. If you run on the other side here, you've got common power in and out also, but if you run on this side, it's illuminated. So that's the way I'm gonna do it. Cut out those wire strands that I don't use, because they'll be used over here and won't carry on. There you go. Terminals are on. Just a matter of connecting to the back of the switch. Yellow for ground. Red for common power. Blue for out. Black for in. Now just a matter of turning that isolator back on under the bonnet. Let's see if this works. All right, so by rights, pushing this up to the in position, should come in. That's in, and that's out. Illuminated, in. Easy as that. Let's get this back together. Maybe go play with it in the paddock. Might change this switch over too while I'm here. So I've got to thin out a couple of trees around home, so what better way to test out this switch? It works. How good's that? So in. And out. Just like that, job done. Switch is in the cabin. Quite a simple job, really. Um, so now I've basically got the wireless control, I've got the in cab, and then I've also got the hand remote. Three options to control my winch. Doesn't get much better than that. Hope this shows you how simple of a job it is to do. Like I said at the start, if there is something I could have done better, let me know so then I can fix it on this and then also people can see the comment and also do that when they do it. This is my version. Hope this helps you get it done in your car. It's quite an easy job. It's that easy. Cheers, guys.